Vicarious is one of those weird terms, though. When I first heard it a long, long time ago, I thought that's what it meant. I thought that you meant you were curious about being bilingual. <laughs> so I started answering a bunch of ads for Vicarious. And after a while, I thought, this is weird. None of these dudes speak a word of Spanish. <laughs> but they all give great head. So, um... <laughs> I'm not sure what that meant, but I'll go with it. Thank you. Because <laughs> I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Cunning linguistics. Cunning linguistics. Oh, yes. Oh, that, was great. that actually, no, that actually fixed. Right. Hey, can you come to the writer's meeting next week? <laughs> well, I'm not gay, but I'm gay friendly. We're the gay people out here. Gay people make some noise. Come on, you two guys. Clap, clap your hands. Come on. Look how close they're sitting. That's so sweet. Now, I like gay people. I think gay people make this world a better place, man. I don't know why people have such a hit trip about it. I got this one friend. She's a lesbian, wants to become a man. Now, that kind of freaks me out a little bit. I mean, I'm all for whatever you want to do with your life, but here's the problem. I've known her a long time. She's this adorable, cute little lesbian. I don't know why she wants to become a man, but that's how she feels. And then when she told me that, here's the problem. We were getting high at the time. And all I could think to say was, where are you going to get the penis? <laughs> the ball she's probably not worried about, but you got to get a penis. Where are you going to get it? I mean, that's a fair question. Is there like a, you know, is there like a, you know, a catalog? You could pick them out? You know, go over to her house one day. Hey, is that the new JCP? Check that out. <laughs> is there a store in the mall where you can go buy a penis in a pinch? <laughs> you know, I've been to the mall plenty of times. I've seen stores come and go. I remember there used to be a store called Wicks and Sticks, but I never remember seeing a store called Pricks and Dicks. That'd be a good name for a store, though, wouldn't it? Hi, ladies. Welcome to Pricks and Dicks. Come on in. I'm not sure why the proprietor of Pricks and Dicks would have a lisp type of accent, but it just seemed to fit. Hi, ladies. Come on in. We're having a big sale this week. White ones are half off. Not a big seller. That usually gets a laugh. That's like my barometer joke right there. It's going to get worse from here on out. Now, I was giving her a hard time, though, but she got me back. Here's how she got me back. This is kind of creepy. She said, they get them from dead people. Ew. Because I'm on that organ donor program? I thought it was just about kidneys and eyes. <laughs> make a smile. And this, yeah, it's Every little thing, that's what it is. And the thing is, this girl I'm talking about, I've known this girl for years, and I've been wanting to give her my dick for all these years, and she wouldn't take it. Didn't want to have anything to do with it. Now I'm going to get into a car accident and give it to her in my will. She'll probably get laid more than I did with it. I suspect. Yeah. Thinking about getting a new car. Hey, guys, come on in. We are just talking about cars. You guys car, car people? Nice. Yeah, it's nice. About the F1 race. Lewis Hamilton won again. I know I shouldn't have talked to him. <laughs> Get him going. I should have just, I just should have kept doing what I was doing. That's right. That's right. No, I was, I'm out car shopping. I'm thinking about getting me a Dodge Magnum. That way I can tell women I fit comfortably in a Magnum. I say it just like that too. In a Magnum. A little snug, a little snug in my Magnum. White guys, do not unravel a Magnum condom. It's bad for your ego. I can't remember. It just kept going and going. I'm like, this is ridiculous. The reservoir tips about all I need. Give me some duct tape and some twine. I'll make that shit work. You know what I hate the most about condoms? The expiration date. Is there one? I don't need that kind of pressure. And I don't need you saying shit in the middle of my joke. You weren't here when we did this at practice. So... I don't need that kind of pressure. I don't need deadlines on my sex life. I'm in Walgreens checking them out, thinking to myself, I'm going to get me a 12-pack. And then I read the label. Two years, fuck it, go for the three-pack. Because I don't mind throwing a couple away, but I don't want to throw away 11. Well, you need one for practice. Do the math. A little bit of math there for you. My girlfriends and I, we tried different types of birth control over the years. I remember uh, once we tried the sponge, my girlfriend said she did not like that. It was very uncomfortable. And I kept telling her, that's because you keep buying the kind with the green scouring pad. Oh, God. Ouch. 
You're just going to leave on that? Is that what it is? You didn't like that juke? That was it? One too many? You're out of here? You're going to go smoke? That's more important than my jokes. I know. I hear you. You'll be right there. All right. My girlfriend and I would try this, the, uh, the diaphragm once. Now, for me, that just felt like I was on a trampoline all night. It was like, boing. What the hell was that? Boing. I was bouncing out faster than I was going in. It was weird. But I got used to it. You should see my dismount. <laughs> Nailed it. I got a 9.3 from the Russian judge. That's a good score. Not on this set here tonight, but I didn't get a 9.3 on this set here tonight. That's all right. I, just, I, should have, I should have come up here and said, welcome to practice night in Stick Martin's garage. Mm. Had a bad accident with my drugs. Not the good kind, the prescription kind. I got two of my prescriptions mixed up. I got my Allegra mixed up with my Viagra. I had a four-hour erection and a runny nose. Don't laugh, I damn near sneezed my dick off. <laughs> you don't hear that in the disclaimer commercials, do you? Side effects may include sneezing your dick off. <laughs> we hate those commercials, though, don't we? We hate those commercials because they all sound exactly the same. They all sound like they're made from a template. They start out with the good voice, the pretty voice. They all got some fucked up name for the drug. They also start out with it. Isn't it time for ass effects? Ask your doctor, what can ass effects do for me? And then you get the ugly voice. Side effects may include nausea, cramps, or death. <laughs> be sure to tell your doctor if you experience death. <laughs> death can be the sign of a serious reaction. <laughs> Don't use ass effects if you're currently using an MAO inhibitor, or if you have a liver. <laughs> Women who are pregnant should not use ass effects. Women who are not pregnant should not use ass effects. Men who are not women should not use ass effects. And then they got the nerve to come back and say, so find out if ass effects is right for you. I feel a little left out. They got one commercial for a drug called Mirapax. You ever heard the Mirapax commercial? It's for restless leg syndrome. And the guy with the side effects comes out and says, side effects may include insatiable urges for sex, gambling, and other risky behavior. And I'm like, see you in Vegas, baby. I'll bring the mirror bags. <laughs> Those aren't side effects. That's ecstasy. <laughs> They're selling the drug backwards, you know. They should do the commercial exactly the opposite. The lady with the cool voice should come out and say, are you cold, tired, and don't take a chance on shit? Find out if Mirapax is right for you. And then the ugly voice can come on and say, side effects may include no more restless leg syndrome. <laughs> Thanks for keeping with me. Man. Can I go a few more minutes, Dick? Is that all right? Because sure, I'm having so much fun. Go for it. You know, I'm killing up here. With this guy right here. I'm killing just with that guy. I almost saw him smile once. I wish they'd let me make a commercial. Here's how my commercial would go. Isn't it time for medical marijuana? Ask your doctor, what could marijuana do for me? Side effects may include munchies, cotton mouth, or the giggles. Be sure to tell your doctor about any cool parties you're having. <laughs> Women who are pregnant should not use marijuana. Hey, but everybody else should give it a try. That's what we should do. We should light up right here and pass it around in the Amsterdam, by the way. This seems appropriately named. God, I can't believe I didn't get a woo-woo out of that or something. Shit. Oh, thank you, Stick. Well, let's see here. The thing is, I talk about pot a lot. talk about it all the time. But the truth is, uh, I smoked for years and years and finally quit buying it. <laughs> but I still smoke it, so if you've got some, I'd love to bogart it from you. And let's be honest with each other, if you know what the word bogart means, you probably got some. Because that's code speak. That's <laughs> Not everybody knows what the word bogart means. Like my grandmother, she thinks I love movies from the 30s. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart, he's my favorite too. And I keep telling her, no, Graham, that's not what that means. It means puff, puff, pass, old woman. You're hogging that thing. Come on. Yeah, she got that medical marijuana. 
And by the way, Florida, with the medical marijuana that you guys fucked up, we were that close. If we're ever gonna get medical marijuana in the state of Florida, we gotta get our story straight. We can't all have glaucoma. I know that's the go-to disease. I don't know if you know this, but your doctor can tell if you've got, they got tests for that shit. You can't go running to your doctor, doctor, I need some medical marijuana because I got glaucoma. He's gonna look you right in the eye. He's gonna tell you, yeah, literally, he's gonna look in your eye and he's gonna tell you, no, you don't. But here's some for your back pain. <laughs> my kind of doctor. That's my California doctor, that's who that is. All right, let me wrap it up with this right here. I'm gonna share with you some stoner thoughts. Where's that mic stand? Here we go. See, I'm a stoner and I'm a comic. So late at night, I wake up in the middle of the night and think, I got this great joke, I go write it down. And then I wake up the next morning, I read it and I go, what the fuck is this chicken scratch? They're stoner thoughts, but once in a while you get a good one. So I started writing those down and these are my three, three favorite stoner thoughts. I call these one hit wonders. Doesn't have anything to do with music or nothing like that. It's just you take one hit, and then you wonder. <laughs> you come up with some crazy stuff. Just come up with stuff like this. I wonder, do deaf midgets sign in lowercase letters? <laughs> it's a one-hit wonder. It's a stoner thought. I wonder if the Fruit of the Loom underwear people want to use fruit to sell men's underwear. How do they miss the banana? <laughs> right? There's no banana in that logo. It's like an apple and some grapes or some shit. Come on, you want to sell men's underwear, you need two plums and a banana. <laughs> on a bed of alfalfa sprouts. <laughs> Come on, if we're going with salad, you know, salad analogy on junk, that's going to sell some whitey tighties right there. All right, one hit wonder number three, and I'll close it out on this. If the government doesn't want me to check out teenage girls, then why do they make me slow down when I drive by the high school every day at 3 o'clock? <laughs> All right, my name is Johnny Oz. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a group of people in the room. Keep it going for Johnny Oz, everybody. Some funny shit. Uh, so I was having sex with my ex-girlfriend recently. And uh, shit was super hot and heavy because we, we hadn't had sex with each other in a long, long time. And like at, at the height of passion, you know, in the heat of the moment, she looks at me and she's like, I want you to do whatever you want to me. So I hit her. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we have Terry, the baby pterodactyl. There you go. Thank you much so much, Stick. I really appreciate you. I hope it's not late enough that my performance enhancing drugs have not quite worn off. I hope you can tell by looking that I'm a lady, and so I will be talking about lady things tonight. Like a, being a proud parent. I'm a real proud parent. I'm a mother of sons. And, I do thank Jesus every day that I didn't have girls. Because girls are so easy to ruin. And boys are just so much easier. They're just as expensive. That a little league costs just as much as a little girl's decoration. Uh, a bat costs just as much as my Christmas purse. It's just terrible. But my sons are wonderful children. Uh, I always knew where they were since I had internet, cable, TV, and endless supply of tissues. I was one of those very understanding mothers. Very good kids. My kids worshipped me when they were growing up. There wasn't a conversation that didn't end in, oh God, Mom. But I was a wonderful mother, a very wonderful mother. My stack of Hallmark cards gets bigger every year. For a wonderful mother. That's me, a wonderful mother. And uh, uh, it's great having boys. You know, they're uh, finally old enough to show me how much they really appreciate me, since now they both have jobs. 
They pull their money together. They buy me the, the cutest bracelet. It's gold. It says wow in diamonds. Wow. The O is an upside down heart. Probably to apologize for the op oppositional de defiance disorder. <laughs> Little bastards. <laughs> But I love my son. The older one did give me a little trouble using my expensive face creams to get the wrinkles out. <laughs> so I got him the hand cream from the dollar store. That's best. You know, you have the sons with the with, with a really soft hand and the pop by muscle, and the other hand is just the regular <laughs> arm with a little kind of rough hand. So. It just goes with the course of things. Yeah, I know about masturbation. It's just what makes the world go round, isn't it? Women do it too. Because, you know, men don't care about women's orgasms, especially in the 1800s. That's when Dr. Granville invented the vibrator. See, women were going to his, his office in his, with hysterics because their men weren't taking care of them at home. And so Dr. Granville would apply digital stimulation to their clitoris until they came and he got that, uh, um, that, that uh, uh, what's that malady when you would do too much uh, with your hands? So he had to invent the vibrator. So it's a, <laughs> he had carpal tunnel syndrome from masturbating all the women in hysterics because the men weren't taking care of their women at home. So that's how he invented the vibrator. Aren't we happy that he did? <laughs> we can't help it come in so lazy. Uh, my son, my younger son, he's a lefty. That means he's smarter and more artistic than the rest of us. And I read that chances are he absorbed his twin in vitro. That explains a lot. <laughs> that explains a lot, but he's a, he's a, they're both really good kids, you know. Not monitor 